morning. Uh, Pastor Blaze and Rose are in Italy for a couple weeks celebrating her retirement. So um, Pastor Paul and Vicar Dave will be leading us in worship. But I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make sure everyone's aware of. Um, this Tuesday, our daylighters will meet um, at 11.15 for a potluck lunch and an interesting program on carrots and coffee. So to learn more about how they go together, come meet with them in the Fellowship Hall, bring a lunch. It's a great time for all the women. We also have our Women's Harvest Tea scheduled for Saturday, November 6th. Um, we had to cancel it last year due to COVID, so we're excited to bring it back. Uh, I'm sorry, what time is the tea? <laughs> <laughs> ladies, the tea is at 1130. Um, oh, ladies only. Yeah, la yes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, sorry. No, it's my sorry. fault. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so ladies, at 1130 on Saturday, November 6th, we will have the Women's Harvest Tea. Tickets are $15 each. Space is limited, so you'll want to sign up early. And we are going to hear from Elizabeth Stanton, um, who was a leader in the women's suffragist movement. And then also, this would work for Vicar Dave. On Saturdays in October, starting at 9 a.m., we will begin the outside work of lighting up the campus for the Christmas lights. So I'm, I'm tied up on Saturday mornings. You might be tied up in lights if you don't make it, okay? Um, <laughs> so if you can help Joe Brando and everybody with the Christmas lights, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and then lastly, if you can fill out your connection card, we try to schedule fellowship events around everyone, and we'd like your input into what kind of fellowship events you'd like to have and also your availability. Um, so take a moment to fill out your connect card, let us know what you're interested in doing, and your availability. And now, Vicar Dave, will you lead us in worship? Absolutely. And I'm going to borrow your teacup. Okay. Please rise. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Let us humble ourselves before God and confess our sins to him, seeking his gracious forgiveness. Most merciful Father, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have not always put you first in our lives or honored your holy name. We have been careless in our devotion and have thought more of ourselves than others. Our thoughts have not always been honest and pure. Our words and deeds have not always been helpful. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your grace is never ending. Help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and place our hope and trust in your word and promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Promise reading today comes from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. Seek the Lord and live, or he will sweep through the tribes of Joseph like a fire. It will devour them, and Bethel will have no one to quench it. There are those who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground. There are those who hate the one who upholds justice in court and detest the one who tells the truth. You levy a straw tax on the poor and impose a tax on their grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent keep quiet in such times, for the times are evil. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord.
Our new promise reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. As has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God, for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Continue with the hymn or the sermon, and you may be seated for this. Oh, the creed. Okay. 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 <laughs> I've been a minister for about 35 years now, and I don't remember the order. <laughs> Shall we? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and remain with you all. Amen. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, maybe I should say buongiorno. I was trying to practice some Italian because I kept telling Blaise and Rose I was going to stow away because I would love to be in Italy right now. But alas, that didn't work out. So, but here we are. And I was thinking about that uh, particular text from the gospel lesson and a certain uh, little reference, a little illustration came to mind of the village that different people were visiting and there was an old man sitting there, obviously kind of part of the village for many years and looked like an uh, interesting character. And so one of the tourists had said to him, were any great men born in this town? And the response was, nope, only babies. And therein is a good pithy point, isn't there? The great ones, the great men and women of the world are all born the same as babies. And we see how our Lord guides us through our lives and uh, all that develops and the things that he teaches us and all the things that happen and hopefully we learn along the way. As we look at that gospel lesson, we see a young man that might have just pretty much been called great in his own day and age. He'd be a great man, even though 
we are told in the parallel passages that are in Luke and in Matthew, Luke adds that he was young. And or rather, he uh, was the one that said he was a, a ruler. So he was part of the aristocracy as well as being wealthy. And then Matthew accounts says that he was also young. So what did he have then that would put him in that category that people might say, well, he's one of the great ones of the land? It wasn't so much what he himself had done yet. He was a little more than a child himself, being quite young. But what he did have was position, and he had wealth, and he had youth. And with all those things, I think he probably thought he had the world by the tail. But there was something still kind of nagging at him. And you see him approach our Lord Jesus Christ, who by this point was already becoming so well known throughout the Holy Land. And goes up to him and says, good teacher. Interesting way to address him. And Jesus refers to that right away. It's interesting how people sometimes to this day will use that phrase. People who sometimes want to avoid the fullness of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ or try and temper the demands of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and say, oh, well, I still say that he is a good teacher. Really? Well, C.S. Lewis puts it in a very pithy way. If you really look at what Jesus was teaching, then you have to really decide, are you being honest by saying that? Because his claims were nothing short of extraordinary. He said either you have to admit that he is either a liar or he is crazy. He said on the level of a man who thinks that he is a hard-boiled egg or He's telling the truth. And his credentials were proven over and over again in that earthly ministry and ultimately on the cross itself and with his rising from the dead. Good teacher, he was indeed. And what he demands and what he says and what he identifies about himself is earth-shattering, earth-changing, and hopefully person-changing as well. That's one of the things we follow in this series. Uh, the things I've been, uh, found myself preaching on is the, the days that I've been assigned to with John chapter 6 and that bread of life discourse and how he's saying, unless you eat of the Son of Man, of his flesh and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. You can't be sort of generic and general about a claim like that, can you? Or what about the other day when I preached on Mark chapter and the earlier verses there where he says, if your hand offends you, if your foot offends you, cut it, them off. Or if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Better to go into life, eternal life, lame or blind than to be thrown with all of those faculties into hell. Oh my. And now we have what he says in this gospel lesson to this young man. Go and sell everything that you have and then give it to the poor and then follow me. That's the one thing you lack. And it says, the young man went away very sad because he had great wealth. How often do you hear a statement like that? Someone is very sad because he has great wealth. Usually that makes people pretty happy. But now he realizes that he's been given a challenge by this good teacher that is way beyond anything that he expected. I think in some ways, too, he was probably maybe even expecting some sort of affirmation that he would be welcome on the very basis of who he was to be a part of Jesus' following and to receive maybe special honor. I think for someone in his position, he was used to being very well received. Usually when you're young and rich and popular and in a good position in the society, that opens doors. And you usually find people like to know you and have you around. Popularity, widely accepted, widely sought out. And he was probably expecting something like that from Jesus. And this is what Jesus said. He seems to always know what is going to throw people 
off of what they expect. And that's true for almost every confrontation that he had, every situation. He knew what was the key point for a person that might be the obstacle for that man or that woman in becoming totally a part of our Lord and his kingdom. And he would invite them out of cruelty, out of a sharpness of teaching. I think it's very important that little detail is placed in there. What does it say? Jesus looked at him and loved him. These words are not said out of some exclusivity for the kingdom of God. And he didn't necessarily say those same things to everybody else. Everybody had a different thing that they needed to face and confront. And in this young man's case, there it was, his wealth. Interesting, he even asked, what do I do to inherit eternal life? I think maybe he was trying to secure his own position in the kingdom of God in that sense because his own position in this world, I think, was the Freudian slip. He was more or less saying, well, that's how I got everything else. I inherited it. I'm not a great man on my own. And Jesus said, no, you're not. Nor will it be of the kingdom of God unless you follow me in this way that he places before him. What Jesus is saying to him stuns the rest of the disciples. And notice how Peter then makes a sort of a protest almost saying, what, what, what we've gone ahead and done all this that we were doing. And Jesus was saying, Yes, and that commendation is there, but you're each one in a different position that he knows what they need to hear for the challenges of the Christian life. And notice the things that he says, that in the course of living out the Christian life, that the Lord provides all sorts of things, he's saying. And indeed, that has been my experience, how in the most unlikely ways, the most unexpected ways, as we go about our lives, sometimes in the most extreme circumstances, God provides. And that's what you realize. God provides. And there will be persecutions, and there will be troubles, and there will be sacrifice that needs to be made. And yet in the end, he said, but eternal life is your gift. And he promises he will be with us each step of the way. Even more to the point, he's saying, yes, Peter, it's true. And to other, other disciples, all this is impossible for mankind, for you and for me, he's saying. But the Lord says, with God, nothing is impossible. I think when you ponder what the Lord is inviting this young man to do, is to really empty himself of all that would attach himself to what he thought was assuring and protecting and affirming in his world and cast himself totally upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he could be great in the kingdom of God. As a writer once pointed out that the level of water never goes above its place as it settles. It has to be stirred up a bit to form the waves and so on. And he said something like that is true with us as well that we can never really attain to anything higher than that level than sometimes what we are encouraged and sometimes forced to do. But then when we attain a new level, we're of more use to reach to more people and identify it is through those troubles and those challenges that we can truly become even more useful for the kingdom of God. But we like shortcuts. Uh, the writer Kierkegaard in Denmark commented about our Christianity. He says sometimes we're like school children, sometimes looking at trying to find the answers uh, ahead of time or finding them in the back of the book rather than studying. We want to find the easy way to something, and the Lord is saying, that's not how this goes. I want to lead you in a path in which you will learn and experience and grow, and you will then develop even more into a faith that will not be shaken. As Philip Yancey, the 
a writer for Christianity Today, quoting a, a rabbi, actually pointed out, he said that faith like Job, who suffered so much, cannot be shaken because it is the result of being shaken. So where are we in all of this? How do we try this on for size? All these other challenging questions from these gospel lessons and now this one. And I could say in a way I would feel kind of relieved as I looked at that, that well, this doesn't necessarily apply to me because I'm certainly not wealthy. This must apply to someone else. Well, then I remember, memory goes through my mind of years ago, visiting in East Germany in 1980 when it was still under communist control and how it was so dramatically different from the West and from Switzerland where we had been. The years of communist control had left it dingy and dull and grim and the people lived in a very a rough situation there and we visited the Luther sites there and but we were very glad when we were could leave that but there was a particular moment when we were stopped in the motor coach that we were in our group that was together and we were stopped in one of the cities I think it was Leipzig but we were there on the roadside and we stopped and there were a number of little boys that uh, were there and they were fascinated by seeing us Americans and they were talking with my brother and myself and they were fascinated by this motor coach we were traveling and they were fascinated by the cameras and all the things and our German was limited but we understood one thing they said to my brother and I you're so rich and you have so much money Sie sind so reich und Sie haben so viel Geld and my brother and I looked at each other and laughed if they only knew we're preachers kids we're college students and then looking around we thought Oh, wait a minute, maybe we're a good deal better off than so many other people in this world. And something my brother and I often said afterward, we never forgot that lesson of how blessed we really are, although we would not have ever called ourselves that before in that way, but realizing that. And it's true when you think about that rich young man, as has been pointed out, that he didn't have the, any ability to turn on an electric light. He didn't have running water. He didn't have a TV. He didn't have a phone. He didn't have central heat in his home or air conditioning. He never flew in an airplane. And as that writer of makes that observation says, if he was rich, then what am I? We are so blessed in our day and age, in the country that we live in. And we look at those things and think about what our Lord is saying. How ready are we to empty ourselves that the Lord will fill us up with himself and his message, his salvation. Ultimately, the impossibility of ever satisfying all of that comes to the foot of the cross. And that's where everything needs to go because it was at the cross that our Lord short-circuited that whole curse upon us in this world since the Garden of Eden. That death was our lot. Death was our condemnation for not being perfect in the sight of our Creator. And Jesus did what none of us could do. And he went to the ultimate extreme of this life of emptying himself of absolutely everything who for the joy set before him it says in scripture laid aside all the glory all the power that he had and ran that race endured the cross and the grave and has won victor victory sitting at the right hand of God the Father as if to say with the cross as you look at that Jesus is saying on our behalf Satan, is this the worst you can do? It's pretty horrible. It's cruel. It's terrible. But Jesus is saying, I'm undergoing it willingly and perfectly. 
And indeed, this is the worst you can do, isn't it? And with that, he enters into the realm of death and he claims the victory, proclaims the victory to the souls in darkness and to all of us this day, that he has short-circuited that condemnation and given to us his perfect life. And he proved it on Easter morning when he rose again. And he said, I have the keys to heaven and Hades, to life and death. You are my people because of his sacrifice. And so our challenge, when you think about what the Lord is challenging us to do, and I think about what he was really placing before that young man. With my love of history, I always kind of ponder a bit of that situation of he went away sad because he had those great possessions and that was calling to him very strongly. He didn't like the idea of living without them. But I also know the history that 70 AD, just 30 some years later, it'd be all gone. If he was only a young man, it's totally possible that he would be living those years later when the Romans devastated Palestine, completely destroyed Jerusalem, completely destroyed the temple. And everything that describes him would be no more. He would no longer be young. He would no longer be rich. And he would no longer be part of a ruling aristocracy because every bit of it was ended and cast away into exile. How about for us? The best choice for him really was our Lord Jesus Christ, always is. You know, as a closing thought, I was uh, reminded the other day of one of my favorite little references that always kind of made me chuckle. It was about the uh, float in the Tournament of Roses parade some years ago on New Year's Day, a couple decades back now. And that particular float stopped and held up the whole parade. It turned out it had run out of gas was the problem. And what's even a little more amusing about it, it was the float for the Standard Oil Company. What a thought. With all of their vast resources of fuel, the one thing they forgot to do was to fill the tank of the truck or that float with gas and fuel for the journey. How about us? With all of our vast resources that are given us in our Lord Jesus Christ, he's inviting us in the power of the cross to live that new life in him, that we are protected by him from all the worst that Satan could do, and that that choice, which he empowers us to do, for the same as that young man long ago, he is always the best choice, and he still is. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. This morning we want to keep Patty Oberholzer and her family in prayer at the passing of her brother, Ron. Our response to each petition this morning is, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Friends in Christ, let us lift up our hearts to God in prayer, knowing he hears us. Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Look on us with mercy and grant us grace to turn away from all false doctrine and heed the truth found in your word, Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. May your kingdom come and shine the light of Christ to a world in darkness. Grant that we share your love and compassion with others so that all may come to know your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit during good times and bad that we would lay aside our wants and follow your good and gracious will for our lives. 
Into your merciful hands we lift up all who are in need, praying, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our desires, to turn away from worldly ways, and to overcome Satan. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Deliver us from evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now prepare for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should always give thanks to you, O Lord. For in Jesus Christ, the servant of all, you have given us a model of service to others. Grant that we live in humility, and faithfulness as we await with hopeful joy the time we are reunited in your heavenly kingdom. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we give thanks for the gifts before us and praise you with upright hearts. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, for in your great love, you sent your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, saving us from the power of sin, death, and Satan. With thankfulness, we receive the blessings he has won for us. Invited by your grace and supported by your love, we come to your table with thanksgiving and praise. Bless and nourish us so that all who receive Christ's holy body and blood seek to serve you and live for the good of others. Receive our prayers and praises and bless us day by day with your abiding peace. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, all of you. This is the new covenant of my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
drink, all of you, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Jesus Christ, true.
please stand. Gracious Lord, we thank you for having sought us, called us, and fed us with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this bread of life and blood of Christ abide in us and sustain us so that we may live to serve you with joy and faithfully serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pastor Paul, next steps. Next steps. Well, I would keep it simply to what the reference there in the sermon, that to ponder this week about anything that you feel is maybe separating you or an obstacle to your peace that the Lord wants you to have as his child in his kingdom. And then to focus on his holy word and his message that as our Lord says, that all things are possible through him. With him, nothing is impossible. Thank you. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.